Hey there, my name is Sam and welcome back to the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. One of the things that I feel so incredibly privileged to be able to do is share with you some conversations with some incredibly special people that I get the privilege of meeting in order to deliver this podcast. I never thought when we set this podcast up that I would meet so many incredible individuals and I would get to share these conversations with you to help you grow your business. Now, today is no exception. And in fact, this particular interview is one of my favorite ones to date. I got the privilege of interviewing Ben Fizik, who is a diamond with Amway, and he's going to tell us about his journey from where he started to where he is now, how he got to where he is now, and some of the amazing lessons he learned along the way. The really fantastic thing about this particular interview is he dropped so many incredible gold nuggets. I walked away feeling inspired and motivated and ready to take action, and I bet you will too. So tune on in. This is an awesome episode. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Hey, everybody. Welcome back on into the Direct Selling Accelerator podcast. My name is Sam Hind and I am super excited today to introduce a very special guest who's joining me to talk about quite a myriad of topics actually, but I'm really excited to be able to have a chat today with Ben Fizik. Welcome along, Ben. Hey, thanks, Sam. So good to be here. Really excited also. Such a pleasure. And I'm absolutely loving the background that you've got going on there. We all know it's virtual, obviously, because that's how this world works right now. But tell us about that background because it's really cool. Well, I started out as a personal trainer because I just love helping people. And uh, if you use into my business, I, I found this industry that we'll talk about soon. And, um, and now it's just a bit of a dream background. I, I have a gym, but it's just for me. So it's my gym. It's my private gym. We closed it down. And I certainly don't have that view in the gym, but it's a dream one day. Yeah, so that it's, view. <laughs> it's the view that's got me. I want to know what the view is of. Do you know? Is it of a specific location? Well, one of our team members sent me this the day after COVID uh, hit us. And I thought, well, no, I'm just going to have it as my background. I've kept it there for a while. So it's a bit virtual. It does look a little bit like Bermuda. We've been to Bermuda on one on one of our holidays yep. and the water just looks impeccable. So, yeah, I'm looking exactly. forward to getting out of the country again quite soon, <laughs> sooner rather than later. Yeah, I know, aren't we all? I was wondering if it was a bit like, uh, you know, Switzerland or something cool like that. That's what it looks like. Yeah. But- Looks amazing. I'm all for vision boards and I feel like that's a really cool one. So I love it. But we should probably tell people who Ben is because I feel like we've gone straight in there. So Ben, I'm going to let you do a bit of an intro, but I do want to just tell everybody what I know about you so far, which is Ben has been in the direct selling industry for 16 years now. Is that right? Yep. And three years ago, you went diamond with the company that you're with, which is Amway, which is a huge achievement. I'm sure you'll tell us a little bit more about that today. But the really exciting thing about Amway, which I know everybody will know who Amway is. The company has been around this year for 50 years in Australia and New Zealand, which is just in itself a really special achievement and huge congratulations to the company and everyone who's got it there, including yourself. And it's really amazing chatting with people like Ben now about how the company has evolved over those 50 years. So Ben, tell us a little bit about how you got into the industry in the first place those 16 years ago now. Yeah. I know you've had a pretty amazing journey. Well, I think a lot of us have been exposed to network marketing, direct selling, pyramid selling, whatever people want to call it at some stage in their life and multiple times. It might have been maybe three or four times I'd heard about it, had people talk to me, but never really show me what it was. And then uh, a mentor to me rang me up one day out of the blue who I looked up to and he said, listen, dude, I want to get into business with you. Let's talk. We got together. He asked me a lot of questions about where I wanted to go, what I wanted. I said, I'm in. I'm, let's go. What are we doing? And he showed me the plan and I just my, just my heart dropped and I thought, what are we, what? I'm not doing this. But he intrigued me enough to look into it. And those that are in it that understand how powerful it is, once you get a bit of a bug for it and you understand what it actually is, you get hooked. And so I was 24, 25 when I first saw it and thought, why not give it a go? And I just thought, why not? If these returns that they're talking about can happen, if those people can do it, then I can certainly do it. And a couple of years later, we reached some pretty cool levels and, you know, We've certainly, in 2021, got a life where we pinch ourselves. Janie and and myself, we've got four kids. 
an eight, six, four, and a 10 month old. And just out, we own our life. We don't have to work if we don't want to anymore. We've, we've got complete freedom. And it was because we made a decision 16 years ago to, to yeah. treat it seriously. And, you know, probably Sam, the most important part, we didn't connect with Amway. It took me a while to connect with Amway, but we connected with the coach. We connected with the people. Yeah. We wanted to go where they were going. I was intrigued, you know, where they were going. I was like, I don't want to do Amway, but those people really like them. I don't want to be around them. So that's kind of what, yeah. what, how we got started. Yeah, I love it. So it's really amazing how much the community plays such a huge part. And it's one of the things I know that I love the most about this industry is the community aspect in yep. any company. You you sort of mentioned that you were a bit unsure about getting into the business in the first place at the very beginning. What was it that tipped you over the edge and made you think, you know what, I'm just going to give this a crack? Well, first of all, I can remember it like it was yesterday. I met up and like I said, my, my coach asked me lots and lots and lots of questions. He was interested not interesting as we hear sometimes. And he yep. spoke about me, 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 me all the time. And it got me intrigued to look into it. But his promotion, uh, he sold the thing that sold the thing. And so he gave me an audio. He gave me two audios. One was of uh, his coach who yep. was a uh, full-time double diamond and, yep. you know, free and, and a sports nut. And I love my sport. And I was like, if this guy plays golf on a Monday, Tuesday and a Wednesday and not a Sunday, then I need to get to know him. And then he <laughs> said to me, the definition of intelligence. Here's what he said. He goes, he said that um, Kiyosaki said that the definition of intelligence is the ability to entertain a new idea. So why don't you just check this thing out, man? I'm like, oh, okay, I'll check it out. I found out a few years later that it was Einstein that said that. So he wasn't yeah. even intelligent. <laughs> but we checked it out. We thought, yep, why not? And he said, if you go to this event next week, whatever night it was, Tuesday night, he said yeah. that after that event, he said, I guarantee that you will know whether you want to give this a go or not. So why don't you just go and check it out and see for yourself? So he didn't try to sell me on the, the business or the mm-hmm. idea. He sold me on getting to the next station or the place where I could I could get emotionally connected in. And that mm-hmm. event was quite powerful and then probably made my decision after going to that event that I wanted to um, participate and be a part of that community, like you say, like yep. connect with those people. Fantastic. Yeah. I, that's And that's such a big thing is playing the long game and focusing on yep. the bigger picture. And I think that's a really good example of how powerful that can be. It's one of the things we talk about a lot, even when it comes to social media. How do you focus on the bigger picture rather than just getting that sale right now? So Yeah. Please- and meeting, meeting people with where they're at, meet them with where they're yeah. at. You know, and yep. it might take, it might take a uh, you know, three months or it might take three minutes, but you've got to work out where they're at in life right now. And he that's that's why asking so many great questions yeah. up front was so important because where I was at, I thought that I was going to trade my way to freedom because I'd read a few books about financial yep. freedom. I thought share trading is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. I want to open up a personal studio, which I didn't have at the time. Yep. He, he, he didn't say, oh, that won't work, dude, but he'd owned a lot of them. And he said, he said, look, I understand why you'd like to do that. You know, tell me a bit more about it. And he eventually, after about two hours, convinced me that if I really wanted to have a big freedom, he said, don't go down that route. What you want is you don't want bricks and mortar. You want a a non-traditional business that provides the same results. And he didn't, anyway, he he listened to where we were at. And and then, I, I mean, we would not be in if he did not listen to everything that I said, listen intently with his eyes and his ears, yeah. Yeah, I love that. And I love what you said about being interested rather than interesting because it's that difference between making it about them versus about you. Super powerful. And the power of asking questions and not just questions but in many cases the right questions and then doing with that what you need to. I think that's really awesome. And sounds like it's something that you teach your team as well. It sounds like you've repeated that a few times. I mean, we've made the mistake numerous times, more times, and still make it today. I still catch myself out not asking the right questions. I mean, there's a great book that they gave us in the early days, Alan Pease's book, Questions oh, Are yeah. the Answers. And yes. I went back and reread it the other day and I just had to slap myself. I said, man, you're not, <laughs> you're not doing this anymore because you get a bit yeah. slack when you get good at it. So you got to go back to basics sometimes and really yeah. just shut up and listen. Yeah, that's actually <laughs> a brilliant book. That's one that uh, was um, a book that I read, I reckon, a good 15 years ago too. So We'll pop that in the show notes. So if anyone wants to check that out, they can. Sure. So Ben, you started 16 years ago. You said two years later you were you were hitting some pretty great goals. Did your business for you take off straight away? What was that learning curve like for you? No way. Yeah. Look, it I think 
in all honesty, if I look back, I think we took off because our coach was so invested in us and we were so teachable. We were so ready. I was there. I turned up. It didn't take me long to make the decision to treat it seriously, but I think he put a lot of effort into our business and helped us to grow, which is great. Yeah. And we didn't realize that until a few years later. And then, you know, we we sort of plateaued a little bit. And in fact, we went backwards, which I'm, I don't like. To, I wouldn't have admitted at the time, but now I think it happens a lot, having seen and mentored a lot of people, is you have the honeymoon period and then it's sort mm-hmm. of you sort of go back. Yep. And we did for about five, six years. We were going okay, but we dropped back a little bit. And then I guess it's just it probably, I, I read Outliers the other day, the 10,000 hour rule. And I kind of think if I add up the amount of hours that we put in, eventually the tipping point just turned and yep. it kind of like took off. And that whole success overnight sort of thing, it wasn't a success overnight thing, but it kind of happens that way. You sort of feel like it just goes ping and the plane takes off. Yep. So quite a lot of things happen. I think it was around, you know, we matured a little bit, but our business took off about eight, seven, eight years ago. And it's really going really well. I mean, to the point where we we pinch ourselves. It's it's incredible. It's such, it is what it is. They tell you how good it is. And at the time you think to yourself, can I ever be that good? And yep. one day you are and you're like, oh my God, I'm living the dream. Now. <laughs> how did I, get here? I love that. I think that's really awesome. And I love that enthusiasm. I, that passion is really infectious. I was excited to be able to chat with you today because we've already had a little bit of a conversation about all of this. And as soon as you jumped onto our call. It's like some people you can feel their joy in their business and other people you feel like the business kind of runs them. And I can see with you, there's just so much joy. And this is, this is what brings me joy seeing this in other people. And I love that. So I'm, I'm excited to dive a little bit deeper into all of that, but I've, I do want to know what was that turning point for you? You just said that there was a point where the business just kind of took off. What, do you know uh, what the catalyst was? How did that do? Yeah, I do. I mean, look, it was us maturing. It was us becoming better leaders, but it was probably us focusing in on meeting people with where they're at. And at the time I was a personal trainer and I was training people to try and get them healthy. And I, and I remember I made a decision. I actually can tell you the date I made the decision and it was that, okay, from here on in, I'm just going to meet people where with where they're at. And 65% of people are overweight. That A lot of them are becoming obese. It's a trend that's going the, the wrong direction. And I thought we have the solution in our hand. We have an amazing yeah. product line, but we've got an incredible system. Mm-hmm. And we also believe that we've got the best system for coaching people through it, okay, because we've just thrown so much mud at the wall. And at that time, I remember I was walking on my treadmill, walking, 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 and pedometers were the, the hit thing. So I was wearing my pedometer and we, we, we had an Omron digital pedometer, which was the best yeah. you could get. And <laughs> I remember was, the time. Yeah. One of my clients came in and said, hey, you got to check this thing out called Fitbit. And I'm like, Fitbit, what's that? That's kind of funny. And eventually I got it and I was like, wow, this is digital steps. This is community. This is a little bit of camaraderie, a little bit of competitiveness. Yeah. And it's literally on your wrist, not your hips. So you sort of, you don't knock it off and lose it. And then about it was about maybe within the same two or three months, Facebook Messenger came. And that really changed our whole ball game because we started to connect communities of like-minded people together. And we call them now not coaches, we call them encouragers. So we oh, just grabbed a whole heap of encouragers together and they helped people to get healthy and to lose weight and get amazing success. And um, if I'm honest, can I be honest? Because I hate not oh, being yeah. honest. We, I found probably the worst people to coach people uh, were personal trainers. I just found that they weren't focusing. Now, I, I don't think they were doing it on purpose because I was doing it for five or six years as well, but they weren't focusing on what really people needed. And that was just getting the food right and the movement right. Now, I've got a gym out there right now, which I use regularly. But I don't think, sorry, my phone never, ever rings. <laughs> it's, it's, ever. What happens is when you do a podcast recording, that's the moment where go. things happen. You know, kids jump in, phones go off. Well, I came to the office the- <laughs> for that reason. And uh, we try to, in fact, I don't even need to answer my phone today because there's a good example. They'll find us because they want us. They'll go and they'll online and they'll find Weight Loss Coaching Works online and they'll click here and, I mean, we're, we're digital today, so that person will connect. And actually, See, and that actually sounds like an old school phone. Can I just? Yeah, I'm, I, I normally unplug it. Actually, I'm. I'm oh my even, gosh! I don't think I've seen a, a landline phone in I don't know how long. How funny is that? I don't even know why we've got a phone still. To be honest, 
<laughs> so, now, don't tell me you've still got a phone book. Our kids no, don't even know what that is. <laughs> they sit on them. But, yeah, so we combine Facebook Messenger, we combined yep. Fitbit. Um, they just mm-hmm. both happen to have the same acronym, the FBs, and we just thought let's combine those two things. Mm-hmm. And then our system, we just got better and better and better at it. And as we became better leaders, pop, bang, it went off. And we yep. just helped people get really good results and then social media really started to magnify it. And as you know, it magnifies the good and the bad. So uh-huh. we, were, we have to be very careful, like, how we used it. Yeah, absolutely. So this sort of segues really beautifully because my next question was in regard to social media because you have really used social media heavily to get where you are now. Tell me about how you, you've mentioned Facebook Messenger. How have you leveraged Let's talk about Facebook specifically yep. for a moment because yep. I want to talk about other platforms in a minute. But how have you leveraged Facebook and utilised it in your business to get where you are? Um, I mean, I looked at it logically. Um, in fact, I read a book called The Wellness Revolution by Paul Zane Pills up before social media hit. And in that book, he spoke about the baby boomers. He spoke about health and beauty being the next trillion dollar industry. Yep. And at that time, social media wasn't a thing, but he said, it's going to be there. He didn't know, he didn't name it social media, but he spoke about this uh, online e-commerce kind of world. <laughs> and there was another book called, and I'm going to drop the name of it, the um, the parable of the pipeline. I'm like a, writing all these books down as you're saying them. So oh, I can put them in the show notes for people. What was that one? The parable? The parable of the pipeline. It's like a rich dad, poor dad sort of book, but it's a, yep. a story about a guy who carried buckets for a living or built pipelines and the pipeline yep. flows 24 seven. And that's kind of lot, what, what how we explain recurring income. But yep. then within that, they spoke about social media. They spoke about, no, spoke about e-commerce and going online. Yep. So I guess I embraced that. And I thought to myself, well, Facebook's the biggest. They've got the most. And I've got it on my wall up here, written here on a blank bit of paper. One point, I've got 6 billion, which is the amount of people in the world there were at the time. And then I've got yep. 1.3 billion in a funnel, Facebook. Yep. So like we're talking like, almost a third of the world is on social media. Yeah. And then and then I just drew out our Facebook page and I thought, well, how many people can we get onto our Facebook page to then go into our funnel, then to become an inquiry, then to become a customer, and then to become an encourager, and then to become a coach, then to become a, a da 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 all the way through to a platinum. And yeah. then eventually we found six people that became platinum and we were a diamond. So I thought yeah, Facebook's no, I the biggest. That. Why not use Facebook? Like, it's Instagram's not the biggest, Facebook's the biggest, and eventually Facebook bought Instagram anyway. And if it's any good, <laughs> they'll buy it. Like they bought WhatsApp the yep. other day. Now we have yep. WhatsApp that sort of funnels into Facebook. So yep. I'm not against LinkedIn. I'm not against Snapchat. I'm not against any of the, those other little, but they're just the mini league. Yep. When it comes to the big player, Facebook's the big daddy. So we just we use Facebook to communicate with our entire mm-hmm. group. I mean, we don't, who text messages these days? We use Messenger or we use some kind of other system. But if you want to find us, our, the back of our shirts we used to wear, find us on Facebook. That was our mantra. Now, I'm only just about to take that away because I don't think we need to do that anymore because you can pretty yeah. much find us anywhere you want these days. But that was where we thought, you want us? We're on Facebook. We don't even have a website. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's an amazing testament. Yeah. I'm like, in fact, we've got a website now, but it's not for finding us. Yeah. So if you want to find us, you, you got to type it into, it's on Facebook. That's where you find us pretty much. So we, like what we did say, we sold out to one spot. Yeah. And then, yep. and then put all Facebook. your focus in the one spot. I love that. And then it's Instagram a really, combined with them. Yep. It's a really great example of how putting all your focus into one area means that you're concentrating that rather than spreading yourself super thin. And I see a lot of people doing this. They try to do, it's like you said, there's not a, a bad thing about these other platforms. It's just that if you're not focusing on being great at one, you end up yeah. being not great at any. And yeah. so I love that. That's a really great example. I love how you've thought that whole process through as well. And so I want to go back to the funnel thing for a little moment because funnel is something that any marketer knows all about. But to the average person, it's like, a what's a funnel? How does that all work? Yeah. So I want to just talk through that process at the very start. So obviously, you've got a process you're taking people through. But what are you doing to bring new people in? So you're using Facebook. Are you using business page? Are you then getting them to groups? How are you utilizing Facebook yeah. Yeah. To, to fill that funnel essentially? Well, we've, we've learned it all. By trial and error. We've never had a coach ever talk us through this. I've been to a couple seminars, but really we've tried it all ourselves. And and I looked it up the other day. I think there's 
five billion now on Facebook, which blew me away. So I'm kind yeah. of like changing. Two point four eight billion, I believe. Right. <laughs> so it's 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 it, I mean it's it's bigger than India. <laughs> yeah. So it's a it's it's huge. So we predominantly do our, one of our rules, which we sort of employ with our coaches. We ask them to. We can't tell them to, but we do zero advertising. And when I say advertising, paid advertising. Yep. We do no Google AdWords. We do boost of don't boost mm-hmm. posts. We don't do mass media. But we literally just use, see, the mantra of our program is you live it and they will come. Mm -hmm. And so you don't sell it, you don't talk about it, you live it and they'll come to you because two out of three people need to lose weight. And when we were looking at the numbers, we worked out that nine out of 10 want to lose weight. Yep. Nine out of 10 are going to a gym to lose weight, which is not the solution for weight loss. Let me tell you, because I did that for so many years, <laughs> nine out of 10 people going to the gym. And this is not to knock gyms because I love them. are not yep. getting a result. And 88% of the population aren't members of gyms anyway. Yep. Only 12% are. So we thought, why not market to the people that are sitting on the couch at home, watching The Biggest Loser, thinking there's no way I could ever do that. Yep. And I can, I can remember, Sam, there was a moment there. You make these moments where you just get emotional and a little bit fired up. And mm-hmm. it had to happen. There was a lady running up and down the stairs out at the front of the opera house. Yeah. And it was the first episode of the of the biggest loser. And she fainted, fell over, and they said, We'll come back after the break to see whether she made it. And I just thought they're they're just selling ads right now. All they're doing is selling ads. They're not helping, they're not educating because it doesn't work. And most of those people put the weight back on afterwards because they never learn the habits. Yeah. So I thought we're going to change the philosophy. And we literally had people lose more weight. Than the, than the people on the show by doing just walking and getting the food right. Yeah. And then so so what happened? We had a bit of a problem. We had New Idea, Woman's Day, the Today Show, all the reporters were calling up wanting to find out about these programs. And we thought, yep. oh, we'll get a bit of free marketing. Why not? Mm-hmm. And it went nuts. We couldn't look after it. So we said we can't do it anymore because all these tie kicker type people were coming through the door and we became a call center. I don't want my phone to ring. <laughs> we want <laughs> your landline. Yeah. yeah, I want coaches to be able to look after their friends and family, and that's kind of yeah. the philosophy now: is family first. You look after your yeah. mum, your dad, your brother, your sister, and then if you look after them, then you get hit in the heart. Then yeah. you become a part of the mission, part of the purpose, and you get out of bed because you've got purpose and health in your life, not because you're working for a, an hourly rate. So the coaches are generally doing the the coaching or the encouraging just because they really, really, really want to. And most mm-hmm. of them aren't even building a business and they're the best ones. Yeah. Because they're right. not trying to make it happen. They're just they're just helping their friends and family through something that they've done themselves. Yep. So I mean the passion obviously is infectious. And this is the thing yep. that you really believe in what you guys are doing. And people are connecting with that. They're resonating with that. How do you communicate that across on, because I'm guessing, and I, by the way, you just, I, I just had a little bit of a, an excited moment there when you said, we don't run Facebook ads, we don't boost posts. Yeah. I love that because I'm not, yes, I know for some people it works, but we don't teach people to operate that way because we want to help people get organic, real. It's organic, connection. completely organic. Yeah. And to, and this is what I want to talk to you about now, sell without selling. So I'm assuming that a lot of what you're doing is not direct selling on social media. So how do you draw people in on, I mean, do you use a business page to to get people yeah. interested in what you guys are up to? Well, I didn't know what business pages were. We had our profile and then eventually this business page thing came and someone said, yep. someone walked into my gym one day and they said, hey, how can I check in to your gym? I said, what? What do you mean check in? And, and so they set me up a page so they yeah. could check in online. And, and then I've eventually kept it, kept adding to it. And so a bit, and then I thought to myself, my God, this is free. Facebook <laughs> pages manager. It's like a free website. This is, it's better than a website. It's yeah. it updates. It is interactive. It gives you so much data and it yeah. updates all the time. All you got to do is you've got to be able to sort of just keep up to speed with it. And so we use business pages predominantly now mm-hmm. to, to do a lot of uh, before and after sort of type testimonies. And these days I'm not even sure because I'm not even really that focused on it, but we used to always tag people yep. and then their friends would see them and then they'll be like, what have you done? Because the results were, we got were fantastic. And yep. you, couldn't, you couldn't argue. They were life-changing. They were like, 
Oh, no yeah. one had to be sold. You didn't have to learn how to sell because you saw the result and it was like when Harry met Sally, I'll have what she's having. I don't care yeah. what she did, I want it. Yeah. So we just put, we just made sure that we, I spent maybe about, to be to be honest, maybe five years perfecting how to get a good before and after photo and just and how to show how good the results were. Yeah. And then, I mean, it happened um, yesterday, a lady that we we did photos for, we did them via Zoom. She literally got her partner to do them. And, you know, she got a hold of them and she posted them online and she said, I'm just so wrapped yep. with my result. And, in fact, she's not building a business. She's not even trying to. She's just genuinely, organically happy yep. with it. Yeah. And the best way to, to sell a pen, which I heard in the early days, is don't talk about the pen. Like, yep. just stop talking about the pen. Just find out what people want. And if people are seeing results like that, they know how to get a hold of you. I love that so much. And this, I just want to translate that for a moment because we've got people listening who are with companies that are not in health. They might be uh, in cosmetics. They might be selling uh, decor or linen or clothing yeah, or yeah. any any great number of different things. So how does that translate? If someone's thinking, well, hang on a second, I can't do a before and after photo. Yeah. Maybe in their company or their location, that's not even compliant. So the question is, can they still be as successful on Facebook as you guys have been? 100%. And you know what? If you took away before and after photos now from us, we'd still be good yep. because it oozes out of you because you you need to be passionate about it. You need to be uh, focused on it, what you do. And here's the one thing. You, you don't need to be selling to everyone. You've just got to find the people that want what you've got. So uh, if you're an expert in whatever field, you just need to find a 1,000 people that like your page legitimately, not because they're liking it because you're their friend or because yeah. you paid for them to like your post. Most of those followers online, they're, they're pointless followers. Like mm-hmm. give me 2 million followers, most of them are pointless. 95% of our followers want what we're offering. So you just got to find something that you're passionate about, that you post about, and probably the biggest mistake we made, and it's a really easy ratio to get right, is one out of every four posts can be salesy. Three out of every four, I just think be normal, be you, you know, offer value. Like John Maxwell talks about add value, add value, add value. (laughs) Think about what you can give rather than what you can get. It sounds like I've worded you up because I feel like you were just saying, all the things that we are constantly teaching to our fans and followers is value first and business pages and not yeah. advertising and sell without selling and be passionate. I love this. This is so good, Ben. Keep going. Sorry to interrupt. And you know my I'm biggest really my biggest pet hate? I, I, I can't stand, I cannot stand it when someone says PM me for more information. <laughs> and what they're basically saying is I'm, I'm looking to get you PM me. <laughs> And so people are going to PM you. Give me anyway. a reason to sell to you. <laughs> Don't say it. You look a bit salesy. They will contact you. They will find you. They will Absolutely. get a hold of you somehow. <laughs> this is the thing. We get so many people thinking, if I'm not selling, how will they know how to buy from me? They won't buy. Yes, they will. <laughs> They'll Just know how to burn. buy from you. They're not stupid. They know you're selling something. But the less you sell it, the more comfortable they feel yeah. about coming forward. I love that. Can I, I also, I've got all these crazy things on my wall because my coach, when I first went to his home, you couldn't see the wall. There was just, yeah. it was just literally things plastered all over the wall and I've copied yeah. him. And I wrote down up here that uh, it's a stat, a stat I found out about real estate that 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect, 25% never make a second contact, 12% don't make a third contact, 10% don't make a fourth contact. Two percent, fifth. Anyway, it goes all the way down. That ten percent of sales are made on the like the Eight. fifth to the sixth contact. Yeah. So, I mean, if you you don't make your sale on the first contact, it's more. It's like the fifth to the sixth to the seventh to the eighth contact. Yeah. yeah. And we used to do. I actually remember how I got interested in Facebook because before it, I used to do letterbox drops to yeah. my closest 200 neighbors and i said yeah. to them, you live within 200 meters of me and i want to help you and you can walk to my gym i can train you i can look after you and the coach told me at the time i had to do at least three one yeah. week apart because on the third time they might be attention. tweaked a little bit yeah so it's about it, you've got to be consistent with your um, whatever you're doing you yeah. can't just do it once and expect to get results do you want to hear something really funny when i first, first, first started teaching in this business about six years ago. 
that picture you're talking about was the first slide I used to show up on my slide deck Mm. to talk to people about the importance of consistency when using anything that we do. And I used to talk about the touch points. So the fact that you need to have eight to 12 touch points out there, which are eight to 12 different ways for your potential ideal customer to find you at any given time. And one of those might be a letterbox drop. Another one might be word of mouth. Another one might be Facebook. But it was my way of trying to encourage people because, of course, we're worried about, well, if I keep posting to Facebook, am I hounding people? No, you're not. They might not pay attention the first five times they see your post. But on the sixth time, it might be the time that they actually stop, look at what you're saying, and then reach out. So I love that. It's it's been it's like we've, you know, I've worded you up on all this stuff. I love that you are going back to the importance of in many ways, it's the old school sales that are just being translated to a new way of doing things. And it we forget about that stuff. But subliminal persuasion, such a big, big part yeah. of what we do. So yeah. I love it. And you know the other thing, which is a little sneaky tip that works, because I, I don't know how I picked this one up, but you know, you go and see, did they like my photo? You actually look sometimes through, did they like my photo? And my wife would tell me they didn't like that photo. I'm like, really? You looked at today, see whether they liked it. If you start intentionally liking people's posts and commenting, saying something nice, they are going to see your profile picture and they're going to associate yep. that with good. And don't go changing. This is what I heard. Don't change your profile picture all the time because it's like McDonald's changing their logo. So yep. when you see the McDonald's logo, like the kids go, oh, but when they see my face, they go, they yep. associate that with the four or five or the six nice comments I made. And they're not salesy. They just add value comments. So if I connect with them out of the blue one day, the sale is made one-on-one. The sale is yep. made with the private chat or the phone call. It's not done. Whenever someone asks me about what we do publicly, I never delve into it because you can't overcome an objection when someone's in, behind a computer screen. Yeah, On the phone you can, but you never want to go into sales where people can see it. Yeah, so you've got to be a little bit intrigued, intriguing about it. You don't want to brilliant. I love it. too much, do you? So good. Curiosity and intrigue in intrigue is is our motto. It's such an important part of using social media. I love it, and I love that you've also tapped onto the profile picture because that's something as well that we try to encourage people not to do. But even further than that, keep it as it's your branding opportunity. Yeah. Um, it's your chance to remind people. And again, I said that word subliminal persuasion before. People don't necessarily consciously pay attention when they see an image or a logo, but they will recognize it over time. And if they keep seeing that picture popping up every time you write a comment or interact with them, then when it does come time for them to think, hey, you know what, I could probably lose a few kilos or, you know, who who can help me with this? Instantly, without them even realizing why, their brain thinks of you and it might be, it doesn't matter what your product is. It's the same thing. It's you will be the first thing in mind because their subconscious has been paying attention all of this time, even when their conscious hasn't. The reticular, isn't it? Your reticular activator. It's actually working 24-7. You have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to keep doing it. Mm. Absolutely. Now, I want to ask you a little bit about balance. We talked about this before. Back when you were, I mean, I know now things are a little bit different. So I want to turn the clock back because there'll be people listening going, well, I'm not where Ben is. But when you were in that building phase earlier on, you're like, right, I've got some big goals here. Can you tell me a little bit about how much time you were spending in your business at that time? And What were some of your most powerful activities at that time? Where did you put your focus? Yeah. Yeah, it's so important. You need to know there's a season of work and there's a season of harvest and you're either in a season, you're in a season. So I, I kind of think if you're working it, work it. So when you've made the decision, this is what you want to do, don't need to spend 40, 50 hours a week, but when you when you're doing it, do it. So you've got to learn. I read a book earlier this year called The One Thing and it was mm-hmm. Changed my life. It got me. My list is getting long here, Ben. (laughs) In COVID, it was just four hour blocks. If you can spend a four hour block doing the one thing, you Mm -hmm. are so effective. So try to turn off all your notifications. Don't let things enter into your mind to distract you. I mean, you'll be so surprised how many times these little distractions take your eye off the prize. So you don't need to spend your whole day doing it. I mean, someone that's working nine to five, Mm -hmm. they might be able to get up an hour earlier and just dig into so that, that morning slot and do your mm-hmm. work. So I definitely didn't do that in my early days. I would spend, I tried to be full-time, 
And I was uh, ineffective trying to run my business and do this business and do that business. And that's why it took us a long time. I wasn't strategic with my time balance management. Here's the biggest tip. I say this is one of my affirmations every morning. There is no points in TV or is no PV in TV. As simple as that. You have to turn off that bloody electronic income reducer. We are. <laughs> I love you, it. You are sewing that. This is the simplest thing. There's so many TV shows that you think you've got to watch to keep up to speed with it. The one thing I, I have one or two shows I watch a month that give me a week, I should say, which bring me up to speed with what's happening in sport. I love sports. So I watch yep. one in particular, but there's so much wasted time on TV. So if you turn that TV off, turn your TV off and make your dreams a reality and be part of your own reality TV show. Uh, it's very easy to do, but it's also easy not to do. So, yep. but, and now that we've got choices and options, we still have to be balanced because we're still working it. Because why wouldn't you when you know how good it is? Yeah. I mean, in all, in all honesty, when we're working, we're working it harder now than what we were then because we just get so, we're so passionate about it. But here's the power, I guess, of this system, the direct selling industry. If those of you, if anyone's watching this and they're not quite really sure whether this is something they want to do or not, let me just tell you, there is nothing on the planet that compares to having someone who has a genuine vested that's a financial interest in your success now if the world worked this way if every lecturer or every financial advisor or whatever only got paid if their students or if their people were successful it'd be a total different world so yeah. our coaches have always got our best interests at heart and so we go to the coaches that are plugged in so if your coach isn't plugged in Go in my advice is go past them and look for the coach that's plugged in yep. to the to the to the system, and they'll hold you accountable, us to be held accountable to having balance in your life because it's yep. so easy to get out of balance. I don't think most listeners or most people would be too out of balance the wrong way, but you can be. So you've got to be careful. Check with your coach because I think it's really important that you're not working at burning the candle too hard so that you're sort of you're missing out on those moments like at the moment we've got a 10 month old I don't want to be missing out on Lucy's life I spend time with her every day deliberately and our other three boys as well so it's it's but you've got to be it's it's such an important one to get right I'm so passionate about it now and I think in the early days before we had kids we thought we were busy oh my god <laughs> isn't it what funny I? you think what did I do with all my time <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah, so yes. you've got to be really deliberate about where you're wasting your time. You are wasting yeah. a lot of time out there. So tell me um, what tips have you got somebody, Ben, who is maybe struggling a bit right now? They might be uh, maybe they've had a business in direct selling for a little while and they're just feeling a bit stuck. Do you have some hot tips for them? I'm pretty full on if you want to take this advice. Your people skills aren't good enough and you talk too much about yourself. You don't actually listen when you're talking to someone else. You're waiting for your chance to butt in and tell your story that's better than theirs rather than asking them an interested, curious question. In this day and age, you don't need um, mouth freshener or breath freshener because you're on Zoom, but a lot of the time you haven't got enough hygiene. People don't, if your breath smells, I'm not going near you. Mm -hmm. If you're not um, if you don't look the part, now you don't have to fake it till you make it. I don't like that, but you've got to look as though you're a professional, okay? Yep. You've got to be the walking, talking billboard. You've got to use the products that you recommend. If someone catches me using a product that's not a part of our product line, man, mm -hmm. that's just like you're caught out. So you're the Britney Spears, right? Yeah. What is the, what's that oh, one? Done, you remember she was a, a Pepsi. Do you remember what I'm talking about? She, yeah, she was, if she was endorsing Pepsi, she was paid massive, massive dollars to endorse Pepsi. And she got caught with Coke in her hand at one of her concerts. And then again, walking the street and not drinking the product that she was That's paid to endorse. And yeah. she lost her contract. It was quite. You've got to be, um, be product of the product. You yeah. have to be that product. And then people can sense that. They work it out. So, but I think the biggest one, if my advice, if I could say anything to anyone, is when you know that this is something that you really want, okay, when it's not just a, it'd be nice. But when you just, I'm talking to the people now that that want this. They want, mm -hmm. they want a six-figure recurring income. They want the prestige, they want the recognition. And I know a lot of people don't think they want recognition. Trust me, you do. People love the praise. Yeah. Give me two to five years because you've got to start to unlearn some of the stuff that you've learned in the corporate world 
or in the management world, you know, because you're, you're basically managing people, not leading them. That's the big difference. And yeah. people won't follow you if you manage them and if you're their boss because they've got a boss. They don't want another boss. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of like. Yeah. A lot of people out there struggling with team too. So have you got any, uh, we, we're going to talk a bit about reading list actually because you have already thrown one, two, three, four, five, six different book titles at me. So have you got any great books uh, that you can recommend for leadership? Because I think that's a really big deal for so many people right now. Well, I think one of the best things about COVID has been that it's given me the time to be on my own and do things that I want to do. And, and, and honestly, when I read The One Thing, I put that in my top three books of all time. Right. The One Thing, right. is, a, the one thing is a book for someone who wants results. Mm-hmm. It's a bit but- full on. It's a bit like, okay, so you've got, to, you've got to basically find out what your number one priority is today. Yep. Okay. And then that will push over another domino which will help you push over a bigger domino because a domino can push over a domino that's 150% bigger than it. So if you keep pushing over the one thing, it eventually gets you there. So yep. for me, this year I decided I would read. Now, I was never a good reader. And when I say not a good reader, I'd probably only read one book a month, which is probably better than most pe- people in the world. But now I'm reading a book a week, if not a book every three days. And I'm reading them not just for the point of reading them, I'm taking away the information. So what we've learned today is the wisdom is all out there. It's just packaged up in these little books, whether you audio them or whether you read them. So I'm, I'm big on it. And I've actually this year, the books that I've read, of which I love, I've gone back and read on Think and Grow Rich, which will find out what your book uh, is. I, I actually love the board game of this, one of my favourites, which is Cash Flow uh, from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which I think is yeah, the same Cash author. Flow 101. Right? Yeah. yeah, love it. If you're competitive and you like a good board game. If you're thinking, I don't know where the network marketing's for me, go read The Business of the 21st Century and then trust me, you will be sold that this is the industry of the the 21st century. It's the perfect business. I'd definitely read, read that book by Robert Kiyosaki. The Compound Effect, I'm reading that again right now by Darren Hardy. It's about daily habits. Yep. Atomic habits. Everyone's talking about atomic habits right now. It really is about habits, getting your habits right. It depends on where you're at. It really does. I think you need to ask your coach, what book do you think, where am I at? We've almost got books now that we recommend at different spaces with where they're at. And from our point of view, probably one of the most successful books to help us get great results. Someone said to me, they promoted it this way. They said, if you haven't read Personality Plus by Florence Litow, Mm -hmm. then you're not earning enough money. You could be earning more than what you currently are because it won't help you earn more in your network marketing business. It'll help you earn more money in your job as well. Yep. And then you work out what your personality is and then you work out what your weaknesses are. Yes. You've got to work out those areas that are weak, your weak points and then you've got to learn how to be a chameleon to work with all the different types of personalities because if you only ever bring people in that are type A or choleric or whatever it is you're after, you're going to miss out on 75% of the world. So you've got to learn how to relate to all yep. types. So yep. yeah. It's actually like I'm looking at this going, right, first of all, I need to have a look at a few of these books because uh, some of them I've read and actually I think Personality Plus sounds very similar to a book that I, I'm reading at the moment called Surrounded by Idiots. Is it in my <laughs> It's all about the four different personality types and how everyone seems like an idiot till you understand how they operate. It's actually a really great book, but I think it'll be very similar to Personality Plus. So I'm going to check some of these out, Ben. I think this is fantastic. I do have a, a little personal question for you because you yeah. mentioned that you didn't used to be great at reading. Now, here's one of my bigger challenges. I love gaining knowledge. I love reading in snippets, but I've never been great at sitting down and reading a book yeah. from start to finish because I get distracted as, you know, lots of us do when we're, you know, creatives and business owners, we get distracted by the other things we should be doing. Yeah. What did you do? to become so focused on, because this is one of the things I've always really wanted to do more of is reading books, but focusing on finishing a book. What did you do to get yourself to that point? I could probably, that is a really, really good question. I think so important to get right. And I read a book this year called Finish, which is (laughs) about what you start, you know, and uh, powerful. But probably what I did, I'd read, when I was reading Finish, it was the third book I'd read this year. So I was getting into it. I'd read two books in January and then I read one in February and I read Finish and I was like, the guy who wrote Finish said that he put out, he wanted to read 25 books in the year yep. and he put it out there to his followers. He said, I'm going to read 25 books this year and he and he read short books, long books, but he read 25. 
So yeah. I made a post on my profile page saying, I'm going to read 50 books in 2021. And I think that's the ultimate accountability. Social yep. media, there's a pretty accountable platform. So I put it out there for one. And then each day I'm a part of groups as well where we're accountable. So we've got groups. So I also write how what book I read and what audio I listened to. I also mm-hmm. write how many steps I did each day. I also yep. write how or many- still counting the steps. Yeah, I can tell you how many steps I've done for the entire last five, since I got Fitbit every day because it's now <laughs> tracked on the Fitbit, which is 2013. Yeah. And um, as a melancholy, I love tracking things. But yeah. because I was accountable to it on a public space and then on a more private space, I, well, I can't not be accountable. So then I started doing the maths and thinking, how am I going to get 50 books this year? And I was way behind. So I started reading 120 page books and that was still good books. And I, and I sort of started getting to the point where I think I might actually do this. Yeah. And, and then I got the habit. It's the 42-day, 63-day or 90-day or whatever 21-day it takes to get a habit. Yep. And then I actually literally really started enjoying it. But you know the secret, the big one? Yeah, like, go. When do you read? Uh, and I used to read at nighttime before I go to bed and I'd be looking at my clock saying 10 minutes is 10 minutes up yet or 10 minutes to be a core leader. Mm-hmm. I would take none of it in. But yep. I would now read, then I'd read when I got back from my walk. And then I decided yeah. someone told me they read before their walk. So I now wake up, go to the bathroom, check in with my coaching team. And then I read my book for 60 minutes. Yeah, right. And I've been doing that now for about four months. Haven't missed one morning in that wow. entire time. Right. And I and I, I must admit, I alternate between real books and audio books. Yep. But if I do an audio book, I'm really deliberate that I'm not multitasking by something where it takes too much energy. So I just clean the kitchen. I do mm-hmm. a 30 minute, 40 minute clean of the kitchen. And then I'd sit down and yep. I and I literally, while I'm listening, I take notes in my on my Google Keep. Yep. So I can kind of write out what I've learned. And I do so much pause. I love audio books a little bit more because you can pause, you can speed up, you can rewind, you can mark yeah. where you're at. Yeah. I sort of, but let me tell you, that would be one of the biggest secrets to people's growth is can they become a rabid learner and a book yep. reader? Yeah, I, I'm just I'm that passionate about it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, I love that. So good. You know, you've inspired me. I'm going to go out. I'm going to put a post in our group today, and I'm going to tell them. I'm going to set a book goal. I'm going to yeah. start reading. I I'll love it. Man. I'm going to like That's it. Awesome. <laughs> and I've got a great list here now. In fact, I I reckon I probably own half of those on my bookshelf and never opened them. So this is. I'm going to go home. I'm going to get my stack. And I'm going to have a look at what I've got to get. What I, you, you asked me before we got on, have you read Green Light by Matthew McGonagall? Oh, yes. Well, listen to the audio books. I really think you have to listen to that one. Yeah, because he, he verbalized it. But I, every time someone mentions a book, I stop what I'm doing and I go to my Google Tasks and I write it down. And I've now, because yeah, right. I don't think it's really important to just read books. I've yeah. already lined up what next book I'm going to read. It's like, uh-huh. what domino am I going to read next? So I'm yep. going, analyzing which is the book I've got to read next for where I'm at right now. Ah, uh, So it's quite deliberate as to what you're oh. needing at this point in time. I love that. I just wrote down Surrounded by Idiots. So I'm going to check that one out because I think. Yeah, a bit of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, my I just I know we've got to wrap this up. I, re- I feel like I could talk to you for hours because this has just been sensational. I feel like I resonate so much with so much of what you're saying. So I just want to ask. What time do you wake up? Because you've mentioned getting up, doing your morning walk or reading first. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I need to hear this. What time do you get well, up? I can tell you this. I got the, um, here's my, here's our advice for people when they first start with us. I say, give me 42 days of this. Get your phone out, set an alarm or put your Fitbit vibrate to wake you up or your mm-hmm. iPhone or your Apple watch to wake you up at the same time every day. Yep. On my alarm, my, my body alarm gets me up. No, I want you up at the same time. And, and we tell people, put your feet on the floor within two seconds if you're waking up, then decide yep. whether you want to get up. But so I get up at five o'clock every day, except on a Wednesday, I get up at 4.40. Oh, I, I knew this. Six, I don't know how I knew it, but I knew yeah. it. Because <laughs> I got a six o'clock meeting on a Wednesday morning that I like to connect with some guys. We have a, a men's group or we have a like-minded group where we connect together. And so before that walk, I've read my book. I have listened to John Maxwell, Minute with Maxwell. I've listened to Darren Hardy, his, his daily tip. And I've also done my morning affirmations, which I'm huge on now. I wouldn't, if you're not, if you're wanting to take all this away right now, don't do all this. 
just take one thing yes then do the next thing so yeah once you've got that one thing down pat 42 days later then habit stack it like yeah. james clear says in his atomic habits stack another habit on top so the one thing probably would be get up earlier yeah and if you are, if you're not a morning person that that's there's no such thing as a non-morning person you've just got to work it out i, I stay up too late well just wake up earlier and then you'll fall asleep earlier. And I think, and we're really big on tracking the amount of sleep we get. So I've got a, a goal to get six and a half hours sleep every night. And I get that 50 to 60% of the time, even with a 10 month old. And I mean, it just means. Maybe yeah, you, you have um, priorities change, isn't it? I'm sitting here right. going, my youngest is now eight and I aim at getting eight hours sleep every night. And I forget how hard it is when you've <laughs> well, got a baby. I ask my wife that and she's like two or three. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And you cope, don't you? You you manage. You and you've just got to, you've honestly just got to turn the telly off because you put so much stupid time into that income reducer at nighttime. You don't need to know that stuff. And your Facebook feed too. If yeah. we're being honest. <laughs> oh, look, totally get it. I uh, One of the podcasts I did a little while ago, I talked about managing as a parent who owns a business and, you know, some of the things that I have to do in order to stay balanced. And one of those things was at nine o'clock at the latest every night, my phone not only goes on airplane mode, but it actually... Uh, doesn't live in my bedroom anymore yeah. because I know habitually if I hear my phone vibrate or if I get up to go to the toilet through the night, I'm going to tap the phone and see what's there and I'll be distracted by something and then I'm not going to sleep. So in order to not be my own worst enemy with that, sabotaging myself, my phone never lives in my bedroom anymore. We've got a few people that listen to that podcast that did that and said it was a yeah. game changer for them during COVID yeah. because we get so attached to social media yeah. and we don't realise. And just, again, take one thing away and don't try and do all of them. Write down some things you might want to do, but do pick the one that you think you need to do best, which is going to help you to do the next one. But love yeah. it, Ben. There's some really awesome gold nuggets in there. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What's your favourite quote before we wrap up? Because I mm. reckon you've probably got a few under your belt. Yeah, I, I can't go past. If you think you can, you're right. And if you think you can't, you're also right. My Henry Ford. And and they mentioned uh, Henry Ford in the Think and Grow Rich. They accused him of not knowing a lot of things, but he said, you give me 24 hours, I can find anything out, you know. And yeah. I've got a team of great people around me. I don't have a high IQ at all. I really don't. I don't have a, I don't, I'm not a fast learner. I'm certainly not that clever, but I'm as persistent as they come. And I have just been quite lucky, I think, to have people that believe in me. And yep. when they believe in me, it means the world to me. That's one of my love languages is words. Words yep. is one of my love languages. So you tell me you believe in me and that'll just lift me up. And then I do the same to others. And I, if I, that's what the Think and Grow Rich is about. And that's what the magic of thinking big is about. If you believe you can move a mountain, you can. So it's all about your belief. So if you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, it's okay. Hang around with people that think you can. And eventually you're going to subliminally think like them yeah. as well. Is it, yeah. It's true that we're the, the sum of the six people we spend the most time with. Yeah. I mean, I've heard different numbers there, but um, uh, I'm going to go with six. <laughs> and then, and then you, don't, you don't have to even be in the same room as them or the same no. You can be listening to their podcasts, their YouTube channels or whatever it is. Absolutely. They don't need to know that you're surrounding yourself with them. I think that's fantastic. Thank you so yeah. much, Ben. This has been really inspirational for me. I've got no doubt this is going to be really inspirational for a lot of our listeners as well. I'm going to throw all of those books. I've I've got quite a, you know, like if you saw my list here, I'm going to have to decipher this afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> this is me writing while I'm while looking at you. But I'm going to chuck this in the show notes because I think that this is going a lot of people really inspired to get in and check some of this out. But I really love what you said about just making sure that you grab that one thing. What's that one next thing that you can do? Because mm. otherwise we, we go into a sense of overwhelm and yeah. we don't do anything. So I'm going to take a little leaf out of your book there. I'm definitely going to hold myself accountable to reading some more books. So thank you so, so much for your time and your knowledge today. And how can people get in touch with you? If they want to hear a little bit more from Ben or they want to follow you, how can they do that? You just have to type it. In fact, I don't, the good news about being a physic, there's no other physics that I know of or too many physics online. So you could just type in Ben Physic onto Facebook and, you know, and P -H -Y -S -I -C -K, you'll find me or Weight Loss Coaching Works is our 
our business. And I mean, the story behind that is someone said to me, what, what are you going to call your business? And I said, I don't know. It just works. It really works. Weightless Coaching works. So we just called it Weightless Coaching Works. So you'll be able to find WLCW online. But yep. I, I didn't mention this before, but all of our team of people, coaches, have their own personal brand. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really important in a network marketing industry that you allow people to have their own personal brand because they're following you. Yeah. All right. Not Amway, not whatever a model you you market, they're following you. So they'll f- and again, they'll find you. It's not like 20 years ago, if they if they don't have your mobile number, they're not gonna these days I can private message Oprah Winfrey if I want to, because she's yeah. online. I can follow her on Twitter and send her a message. So just be careful, I guess, what you what you do online, because within a second you can lose it all, can't you? So I think yeah. we've got to be really wary of not posting unless you probably check up line, check with your coaches what yeah. they so make sure that you're staying compliant, you know what you're doing. Well, um, check with people like you, because you guys, this is this is the one thing is after today, yeah, hey, we're we gonna be talking. messaging you straight away saying, Sam, I think we work quite well. We've only spoken twice, but everything I've heard about you. I've loved so far. Someone else has told me how good you are. And so I'm like, so Sam, let's get together. I know the network of people you're connecting with is similar to mine. You do this for a living. I don't. I'm just learning it. I'm like, can you teach me a bit about how this works? I'm teachable. So I'd be I'd be finding out from the experts rather than you trying to learn yourself. Find yeah. out from the experts. That, There's the- no point reinventing the wheel. I love that. And that's a really good point. You know, Absolutely. If you want to learn how someone's doing it really well, go to someone like Ben or there's, you know, dozens of people out there that are, you know, kicking goals, but there's no point trying to figure out a new way. Someone's worked it out. So watch what they're doing. And that's what this podcast is all about as well. Listen to some of those people who have done it and take one thing from each of them. And yeah, love it. So good. Ben, do you have any parting words? I feel like I said we could chat for another hour here, but we do need to wrap it up, unfortunately. Okay. So my parting word is pretty simple. We have not yet even got started. We are living in the best time ever. Unfortunately, you don't know that because these days there's so many media news outlets trying to get your attention that they just bombard you with tragedy porn. So you yeah. think it's worse than what it is? It's not. It's just the fact that 15 years ago there was only four channels and they didn't have to fight for your eyes. But these days there's a lot of headlining, there's a lot of rubbish out there and they're attracting you to it. And you, if you expose yourself to that stuff, you think the world's terrible. It's not. This is the best time ever to be alive. The information age only just begun. We're only scratching the scratch of the scratch right now. Like <laughs> Walmart, we're talking, there are like a hundreds of billions of dollars. And, and what do they sell? Just consumables. Yeah. I mean, they're not changing people's lives. So direct selling, this is the market that's going to grow because direct selling has high quality exclusive products that don't need to be advertised. So just know if you're in this field and you're struggling, guess what? It's hard. It's probably harder than what you think, but it is 10 times, if not 100 times better than you think. And we're not even getting started. This is only 2021. Imagine in three years time where it'll be. Like, please, hold on tight. (laughs) I love that so much. Well, if you weren't feeling motivated and inspired, I bet you are now. What great encouragement, guys. If you're thinking right now you've missed out, you've been a bit left behind. I know a lot of our listeners certainly feel a bit left behind and overwhelmed and you know what? The opportunity is still there. You've just heard Ben say it and I 100%, 150% agree with you, Ben. I think this is an incredible industry in an incredible time and the opportunity is just huge. So thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you for being so generous with your time and your knowledge. And we'll pop a link for people to reach out to if they do want to touch base or follow you on social media. We'll pop that in the show notes. So thank you again so much for coming in. I have loved this interview. It's been so much fun. Even if no one listens to this, I had a great time. Well, um, and so have I. It's like the law of reciprocation, isn't it, right now? I'm just, I'm loving giving out and helping because I know you're going to be able to help us as well at the same time and we're going to connect more. So appreciate it so much. Thanks, Sam. Thanks so much. Well, thanks everybody for listening and tune in again next week. But thanks so much. Bye for now. God bless. And we'll speak to you all again soon.